We're here at the Bug Creek Muzzleloader Association uh, Trade Fair here in Linton, Indiana. A lot of good vendors in here, and I got this book by Eddie Price. It's a sequel to Witter's Landing, one of my favorite books. So uh, come on up if you if you can't make it this year, make it next year. It's usually in January, um, but it's it's a good time. So we were going through this trade fair in Linton and we see this booth and these two, two cool looking guys and we just had to introduce ourselves and meet them and, and talk about their stuff. So I'm going to let, uh, let them tell, tell them a little bit about themselves. Hi, my name is Eli Froge, uh, where I do a lot of uh, muzzle loading accoutrements. Uh, build about one rifle a year. I don't get too carried away. Uh, anything from spatulas to knives. I, did try, I try to forge all my own hardware for my guns. Uh, the only things I don't do is the barrels and the locks and, uh, and the set triggers. Uh, I'm from uh, West Central Indiana. I do with the Wabash Valley Frontiersman over around Cuga. One thing I'd like to talk about is some of my kit here. Where, wherever I go on treks, I mean, there's this is pretty much what I carry. I mean, everything from from food. There's whatever sausage, garlic, uh, coffee. Keep my fire kit stuff in here. Little candles, some fat wood. This is a little quilled pouch by Dewana Tucker. She does a really nice job. She does everything from Legos. I don't know if you know her or not, but she, she does pretty cool. I keep wear a lot of my period of money. My flex striker. Hard to tell them about over there. This is another one of my food bags where I keep my jerky. So do you make your bags too? Yeah, yeah. Pretty much try to try to do it all myself. Buy the materials to do it. Keep a lot of my gun parts and stuff in there. A little extra little powder horn, mainspring vise, another mainspring, little funnels, barrel oil. It's pretty cool little piece right here. This is my sewing kit. Did you make the buckle? I bought that buckle. I've, I've made quite a few buckles. But you buckles. could make it. Oh, yeah. That is cool. So this is, keep all my scissors. And, I actually keep some copper wire in there so if your button falls off, I just wire it back on rather than sewing it. Because if you sew it, it's going to fall back on, guaranteed, sometime. There's some scissors, a little sewing all, a couple needles, some wax in there, some thread. Try to keep everything compact, you know what I mean? Because whenever you're out on a trek, I mean, you guys know weight is, weight is a big deal. And keeping everything organized, that's one reason why I built this pack, is to where everything has got its, it's, got like its own it. spot. Yeah, you know I like what that. I mean? It's very organized. If you're trying to work in setting up camp in the dark, or even tear down the camp, I mean, just being able to reach in here and know exactly where everything's at. There's no adventure in that. You can't, like, just keep <laughs> right. dishing and fishing for stuff right. and, like, yeah. having to dump it all out. You <laughs> solve that. That's, that's part of the fun. <laughs> Heard my journal. Uh, little bag of eggs. Yeah, too. Uh, actually, a friend of mine, his wife, handled that. Uh, her name's Paula Hogan. She's from Hillsborough, Indiana. She's the wife of Kurt Hoagland, and they're really good friends of mine. Paula does some very good stuff. She's a CLA artist. She, she does everything from horn straps, 
she's just now getting into blankets, but she does a very, very good job. I do like it how you got it on the... Yeah, so this, this has got winter straps that come around and buckles. You know, yeah. Maybe it's long enough to where you can put your diamond and maybe another blanket. So, you know, your bedroom might be that much rather than just one blanket. Yeah. And yeah. the main strap is this here. Yep. So all this flips around here. Folds up. Obviously better than that. But it comes around like this. Oh, okay. Well, that's very cool. Awesome. Uh, wax. <laughs> nice. So how long have you been in this? Uh, I don't know. I kind of grew up around it when I was a kid. Uh, and I started blacksmithing when I was about 13. And uh, kind of got out for a while with cars and women and, you know, just growing up. Got back into it. And I've been doing it for about, about eight years now. I mean, like diving back there. So it's been, I've met a lot of good people. Uh, <laughs> It's been fun. How often do you go on treks? Uh, there's there's a close knit few of us that we try to go at least twice a year, and we talk a little bit more about gun as we're all together as a group. So it's it's going to be a good thing. I think uh, Jason Jacobs, Jason Hodges, uh, Troy Lewis, Sam Benton. It's a good thing. You learn a lot when you go out. It's, it's very humbling, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. That's actually my favorite part, is feeling like you're actually doing something. Right. You know, yeah. it's like you're living in it and it's you're in the moment. You're not. Right. I think yeah. that's my favorite it's, part. You just get away from everything. That's what I really love. Yeah. It's so quiet out there. I love it.